Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about who's going to be next, who's going to get absorbed next mm -hmm. uh, into a streaming service. And it sounds like Deadline thinks it's going to be Lionsgate. Well, it sounds like several people think it's going to be Lionsgate to the place the CEO made a comment about it <laughs> at the investor meeting or whatever. Now, we've actually heard back channel that uh, there are some parties that are interested in buying Lionsgate. And eventually what's going to happen is all of these movie studios are going to be bought by tech companies or streaming services before it's all said and done. Oh, probably, because they're looking for, for fodder for, you know, yeah. content. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 191,000 subs. Uh, thanks for the support. Now, this news comes right after Amazon bought MGM. Yep. And after uh, AT&T scraped Warner Brothers off the bottom of their shoe, they're merging it with Discovery. And there's talk that uh, Discovery and Warner Media are going to be sold off as a package to some other company at some point in the right. future. So everybody's, Hollywood's basically being sold to Silicon Valley. They're going merger point. crazy. Merger crazy. And it's not really good for consumers because you're going to have all of our entertainment coming from one or two sources. Right. Um, I mean, it's good in the fact that you might only have to pay for one or two services, but you're going to be held hostage for prices probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let's let's talk about this Lionsgate thing and maybe some potential potential buyers. Uh, this is coming from Deadline. In a current M&A moment, Lionsgate, a prime target is CEO John Feltheim, Feltheimer, uh, downplays concept of scale. So the Lionsgate CEO said that uh, the two media merger deals in, in as many weeks are a resounding affirmation of the value of content, IP, and brands. I get so sick of all of this stuff just being referred to as brands. You want to know why everything sucks lately and why they keep rebooting things poorly? Because they don't appreciate what it is. They just look at it as an IP brand that they can they can leverage. They can, you know position for money yeah it's not it's not it's a story <laughs> so. i mean some of these some of these movies these tv shows were you know uh lifelong works by their creators uh they were stories that maybe meant a lot to them and now but they're these just people there's one ip of many yeah yeah i mean this is this is this is where we're at guys uh the company wants to keep its head down and not get distracted by this concept of scale obviously we will talk to everyone we listen to everything he said in a conference call yeah, because um, I want the, the shareholders to be like, wait, you're not going to make us money? Yeah, right. Even as Lionsgate, uh, he said uh, in a conference call following a strong quarterly earnings, uh, even as Lionsgate is considered the most likely to be scooped up next if or more likely as a wave of consolidation in the sector continues. Uh, the company's shares reflect that as well as solid growth in Stars subscribers and across the portfolio. That's right, they do They do mm -hmm. own Stars. Yeah, stars. Uh, stock has risen steadily since AT&T announced plans to shed Warner Media in a $43 billion deal with Discovery. Uh, Amazon is buying MGM for $8.45 billion. Lionsgate shares closed today up 1.3%. Uh, mergers come in waves. There have been constant waves. The waves are gapped Father and father, father and <laughs> further and further apart. apart, further and further apart, but they're bigger and bigger because there are fewer and fewer companies. This is a problem. I mean, this is a problem, uh, said Neil Begley of Moody, who's been following the sector since the 80s. Lionsgate looks a lot like MGM. It's got one of the leading libraries out there. It's got Saw, Hunger Games, and John Wick. Um, only uh, two of those things are probably worth anything mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, Jeff Bezos said his deal was a simple function of MGM's vast, deep catalog of much beloved IP. Amazon will use the content to power Amazon Prime Video. It's just, that's, that's all it is. That's all it is. Is, is, is like, you know, what can you, you, what power pellets can you get to be bigger and bigger and bigger? <laughs> it's yeah. Every, it's all, everybody's becoming Voltron. Mm -hmm. Actually, it reminds me more of, uh, to, you know, to bring up another streaming service, Netflix, Stranger Things, season three, spoiler, if you haven't seen it yet, a uh, bunch of people in town get infected and they 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 basically just kind of turn into goo and then merge into a giant monster. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. We're basically going to have the, the Hollywood tech monster eating everything. So now is a really, really good time to come up with original ideas because it sounds to me like, especially with uh, MGM and Amazon, it sounds to me like they, they're looking at reboots. You know, of course, because everybody, you know, no one wants this stuff, but they're going to shove it down your throat. 
Yeah, yeah. They're not going to come up with a bunch of new stuff. It's going to be like, well, we own, you know, RoboCop. Let's do another reboot of RoboCop because the last one worked out so well. I know, right? Uh, we'll just so blame well. it on the toxic fans. We'll blame the fans when they don't like it. Uh, yeah, so they said today everyone has realized they have to get bigger in streaming, so they need content, says Alan Gould of Loop Capital. I almost read that as Alan, Alan uh, Lould of Goop. Oh, of, uh, you know, yeah, that's a candle. That's, that's a, not candle. a candle. A capital. That's a candle, that's a candle not capital. I uh, might burn your house down. Mm-hmm. Or uh, catch it on fire. Catch on fire. <laughs> they need more content. So this is it. It's like instead of creating new things, they're just going to go buy other people's things. They're all they're all taking the play from the Disney handbook. Mm-hmm. The that Bob worked Mike. out so well for Disney. Yeah. And, and this is catastrophic, I think, for a creativity. Lot, for creativity. Absolutely. Because it's like, why... Why find new talent to come up with new stories when you can just buy other people's ideas? Well, the problem is when you buy all these ideas that you're just buying these IPs, you're you're waste you're, you're throwing your money after that, so you don't have the money to to make something new. Yeah, because it's not cheap to make something new, which is why they keep you know barfing up the old stuff and doing it again. But what happens is they run the content, they run the IP into the ground because they strip mine it. They tell stories beyond the end, the logical ending of the story. You know, I mean, look at the Star Wars sequels. They do not need to exist. There's no, no reason for them to exist. No, and they, they, they want to bank on nostalgia, but when you take it and you take everything away from it that made it what it was, you're not going to have that nostalgia factor. Like, oh, it's okay. It's for new audiences now. And then you complain when you don't have fans. It, it's, you know, you can't have it both ways. Uh, so they're talking about how Lionsgate is attractive to potential buyers because it's a free radical at a digestible <laughs> size. That's a power pellet. <laughs> It is. <laughs> wanka, wanka, wanka. Uh, I was kidding, but that's funny. He estimates it would be worth at least $8 billion or $31 a share. They have stars, which again is, yeah. you know, another, it's basically a streaming service. But it's service making at this stuff point. at least at that, you know. Yeah. Uh, value, he valued stars at $5.9 billion and the legacy film and TV businesses at five. billion. So probably 10 to $12 billion deal if they sold it. Uh, Lionsgate is uh, not burdened with basic cable networks, which some see as a liability for another free radical. Oh, God, God, AMC Networks. I think it's funny they call them free radicals. I thought free radicals were things you're supposed to neutralize with, like, vitamin C so you don't look old. Yeah, so this is, uh, look, everybody's getting gobbled up by everybody else. Everybody's eating everybody else up. It's like the Pop Talk commercial. It is. Um, they were talking before that they're like, could could CBS and NBC actually get together because what really kicked this off was the Warner Media thing. Because they're mm-hmm. like, "Oh my God, Warner and Discovery together are big enough to take on uh, Netflix or uh, you know Disney Plus or whatever they want to do." And now they're like, "Oh my God, you know now CBS and and NBC they're both having problems individually." Next so. one, Disney smartly bulked up already with Pixar, Lucasfilm, Marvel, and topped that off by buying the entertainment assets of Fox. Yeah, Disney overspent on Fox, and Disney yes. put themselves in the hole that you know drastically in the hole. With buying those other um, franchises. But here's the problem. Um, you know, if they hadn't had the pandemic, okay, maybe they would be coming out of it. But the pandemic threw them in the hole even further. So they're not, they, I mean, it, you can say smartly, that's arguable. Plus, they, they're not handling the, you know, the, these companies correctly. Mm-hmm. Marvel's doing fine. I'm not going to say they're not. For Except now. For, for phase four for is now. a little bit iffy. Lucasfilm, they've already completely pooped on that one and pixar they're just they're just relegating them to, to disney plus direct to disney plus yeah pixar has been relegated to basically direct to video at this point mm-hmm. and I, I think that that speaks to how personally how much of an influence john lassiter was on the company like basically they got rid of lassiter and and he's taking he's taking what made pixar pixar and he's taking it to skydance I, but i also think pixar was known for being creative and they do they have people that do push the envelopes and do yeah. really cool stories the problem is they're not given a chance to to shine they're kind of just thrown on disney plus now yeah um and they're putting all their effort into like lucasfilm and marvel lucasfilm i think and i think both of them are headed for brand fatigue i think on both of them if you aren't already there yeah um so. and that's it you can buy all this stuff but you have to keep the plates spinning i, I mean disney one of the biggest mistakes they ever made when they bought the Muppets was they basically – they didn't know what to do with the Muppets, so they just sort of tabled them mm-hmm. for a while, and then they brought oh, – Now they, they're trying to leverage Muppets like crazy. Yeah, and then they brought back the uh, – they brought them back in a very ill-conceived primetime, very off-brand uh, primetime series, which has funny moments, but it definitely wasn't – the Muppets. Well, now they're you know. trying to do a, ho- a Halloween special at the Haunted Mansion, and they're using them for PSAs about why you should get your – you know, get shots. 
so basically, yeah, the Muppets are, oh, we got this this old, uh, the Muppets laying around, so let's just, you know, dust them off. And... Right, and then they're trying to leverage, like, the Muppet show and stuff, the old one, that, you know. So <sighs> yeah, they're just trying yeah. to leverage it for Disney+. Plus. Same. Yeah. Again, the, all that's for Disney+. Plus. It's all way. marketing, yeah. And that's what they, they've done with the Muppets. I mean, the Muppets, for the longest time, is basically they were uh, brought in to do parodies of other other movies mm-hmm. and like they didn't have their own voice. They had to, they had to bring them in just to parody, you know, tre- I mean, and the movies were good, you know, treasure Island was good and all that, but they didn't know what to do with them. Mm-hmm. Nobody really knew what to do with them. But now here, it's funny. They mentioned Fox because we are hearing on the back end, <clears throat> on the back end, Allegedly, to go, rumor, 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 go look it up for those. You don't understand what rumor means that, uh, Tubi, remember Tubi, the, uh, streaming service that Rupert Murdoch, uh, bought for next to nothing by Hollywood standards. Yeah, the rumor is that Tubi is going to be looking for some content uh, that they're actually... Which we've pointed out. Yeah, they're actually creating new content and they have the deep pockets to be able to buy a company like Lionsgate. Right, which the other reason we're bringing it up, people are like, why do you bring Tubi up all the time and, and you know push that so much? Because we're telling you, you need to watch for this because no one's looking at this. They're all no. looking at each other who to buy up and everything else. They're not paying attention. And this is creeping up in the back end in the shadows and no, one, you know, no one's seeing it coming. Yeah, it's so weird because, you know, everybody's like, oh, hey, you know, Rupert Murdoch's getting out of the entertainment business, uh, sold off Fox to Disney. Meanwhile, they took Disney's money, part of Disney's $71 billion that they overpaid. They went and they bought Tubi. And everybody's like, oh, nobody's going to want Tubi because a lot of that content's going to other streaming services. Oh, Tubi, nobody, who, who gives a shit? Uh, Tubi's nothing. So they went out and they started cutting deals with that. They have a lot of exclusive anime now. They're actually creating their own content now. They're working on that. And uh, Fox Animation, right? They might have sold the old shows like Simpsons and Bob's Burgers and Family Guy to Disney, but they're taking a lot of those creatives and they're creating brand new stuff under right. Fox Animation. Which people want to see, you know, new things. So it, it is interesting because I, there, I think that no one's no one's paying attention to this, and this is, you know, this is sneaking up. And I would not be surprised if they didn't, because they've already been buying, con- you know, rights to content. Yeah. I won't be surprised if they don't come in and, and start grabbing up. Vastly, More. vastly underrated movie. Oh, why can't I watch Speed Racer? Anyway, uh, yeah. So watch it. If somebody's gonna buy it, it, it could be a Tubi or it could be it could be Apple. Well, they have a they have a shit ton of money over there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Murdoch had money before Disney, and they way overpaid. And I mean, what did Disney really get out of Fox? Not much. No, they, I, I think most of it was because they wanted some of the rights back for like, what was it, X-Men and for... Fantastic yeah, Four. Yeah, and, and then for yeah. like the Star Wars because they because they, Fox had the uh, the the rights to the original trilogy for sale, selling for DVDs and all mm. that. And, and they would have had to go through them. This gave them back the rights to that. But um, I, it, it wasn't worth the billions they paid for. I think it was just Iger didn't want to back down because he didn't want to look like he was weak. Yeah, well, and he gets to walk away, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. And then get to uh, be an ambassador to China. <laughs> so I think are we gonna wrap this one up? Yep. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're gonna keep an eye on the uh, streaming mergers because it's gonna get really interesting really quick. Bye. Bye. <laughs>